guys, it's me Chipmunk. Now today's video is going to be on the recent suicides and death of celebrities and what this will probably mean for the future. So if you don't know, recently this past week Kate Spade has passed away from an apparent suicide. And this one that really hit me, Anthony Bourdain. Kate Spade was only 55 when she passed away. Anthony, only 61. And Anthony's hit me more just because I've never been a really big purse, like fancy purse person like Kate Spade was. But I'm a real big foodie and I watched Anthony's show on the Travel Channel, No Reservations, all the time. My favorite episode from that TV show was one of the first episodes I've ever watched, and it was him on a caper farm. And I just remember him eating this whole big meal, and it stuck with me ever since. The day uh, been announced that he had passed away, I was in my economics class just talking with my teacher, and the only senior that came in that day um, was like, Hey, did you hear Anthony Bourdain passed away? And I looked it up and we're like, No, it can't be. And lo and behold, he has passed away from an apparent suicide. And I've been reading a lot of um, articles on him lately. And it seems that after his first marriage, he was very suicidal. So this, and he wrote it in his book too, that he was aimless and actively suicidal, I believe. That's what he said. But he just seemed like a stable person, and it's just a huge shock to me. Because he was like one of the greatest food icons. He was raw. He, would, he wasn't afraid to tell you like it was. And now he's gone. And I can't wrap my head around it. And shortly after, the CDC has released numbers and said suicide rates have gone up. And people are pointing the finger at everything. They're pointing the finger at social media. They're pointing the finger at video games. They're pointing the finger at movies. But they're not pointing the finger at themselves. You know, my mom brought up a good point. They were talking about this yesterday at a party. My mom said they're looking at the wrong end of the story. They're looking at the story, the end of the story, like when they killed themselves. They should be looking at the beginning because the end would have never happened if they don't look at the beginning and the story that it brought along. And Kate Spade had been suffering from depression and depression usually is a factor in suicides, but it is not the main cause. Just because you are, have depression does not mean you're going to commit suicide. And people are not pointing the finger at themselves. They're pointing it at everything else but themselves. You know, if someone comes out and like really is like, I have depression or I'm struggling with something, people are just nowadays are going to push it to the side and be like, yeah, well, I have this problem. What are you going to do about it? They're not listening anymore. And it's part of the reason people, kids think it's socially acceptable to call people mean words, which I'm not going to repeat because they're really offensive. Kids make fun and say, oh, it was only a joke. Yeah, well, teacher in charge of our newspaper, <clears throat> in one of his classes, he runs, a, he runs a film is lit class. And they used to do a movie project where they would write a script out and perform it. These kids got the script approved, but changed the script, and they made fun of a kid that was in their group that had clinical depression. These kids thought it was okay to make fun of this kid because he had depression, which I find is not okay. And people wonder why they think people are not, they don't want to be in this world, because people just make fun of them for having these problems that isn't their fault. Suicide is not the coward's way out. It is not selfish, which is a huge misconception. Anytime someone in anyone's life 
dies by suicide. They go, that was a selfish mood. They were just trying to be a coward and get out of this situation. And it's not a coward's way out. It is not selfish. These people are in a mind space where they think, okay, if I do this, I'm protecting everyone I love. No one wants me here anyway. <clears throat> I'll let them live their lives now that I'm gone. And that's what goes through people's heads. That they're not wanted, that they're not loved, that they're not needed. My mom actually said the other day, Okay, they took a step. Now I'm going to take this step. For celebrities that have died by suicide, people are thinking, maybe I'll take this step. And this guy that actually tried that tried dying by suicide that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, he said the minute, the second his hand left that railing, he regretted everything. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Believe me, I know that. And when people think that they want to die, they're not in the right mind space and people don't grasp that that it might be their fault because this happened if people were just a little bit kinder in this world it might help just a little i read something earlier where they're like oh if you check on like anthony Bourdain loved life robin williams was nice and loved life Kate Spade was talked to an hour before she passed away and she was all happy. Someone said, you need to check on the strongest ones. Yes, checking on your strongest friends might be a good way to help it, but it's not the solution. The solution is to destigmatize mental health illnesses, to destigmatize being weak, destigmatizing crying, grief. People don't grasp that we live in a world of stigma. My generation just lives within stigma. Oh, come on. Your life isn't that hard. You're young. Well, my school had a girl pass away from suicide. We live in a world of stigma. And it is going to take us so hard to get back out of that stigma. Because it is in our movies, in our TV shows, in social media... These stigmas live with all of us. School's not that stressful? Please. I, my little sister cries every night because of how stressful school is. I used to cry every night. I get six hours of homework for nine classes, which I have to finish in two hours. Okay? School is stressful. And then on top of that, you have kids that make fun of others because, yes, I have a mental illness. Yes, it is prevalent in my life. And kids don't grasp that. <clears throat> it just aggravates me because I have this kid in my class who thinks thinks he's better than everyone else. And he makes fun of everyone because they might have a mental illness. And he doesn't grasp that maybe that one time he's made fun of someone might have actually pulled the trigger. He doesn't realize that his actions have consequences. I'm going to put a link down below. And this is Matt Pat's story. He saved a kid's life just by saying hi. So next time you see someone down in the hallway or down out in the real world, say hi and talk to them because maybe you're saving a life. So sorry this was very deep. If I got a little bit information wrong, I apologize. I'm trying to read up on this topic so much. I did a research paper on teenage depression last year. Suicide is a growing cause of death in this state, in this world, especially for teenagers and young adults. I'm going to put resource hotlines in my description below. Please, please, please use them if you need going to I'm going to include different resource hotlines other than the National Suicide Hotline because I've heard good things about it and I've heard a little bit not so good things but I am always here if you guys want to talk if you don't feel comfortable talking to anyone else okay 
I'm gonna put one of my other videos of one that's perfectly suitable for you in this box somewhere. Remember, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, guys, I'm Chipmunk, and stay true to who you are. Bye!